Good evening one and all. We will continue with the yesterday's session what we have stopped there. From there we will start today. Yesterday we have seen how a diode is fabricated. For that purpose we require a p-type semiconductor and an n-type semiconductor. So yesterday we started with the p-type semiconductor, then we have seen n-type semiconductor, then how a p-n junction is formed that we have seen and also a p-n junction under forward bias condition how it is going to operate, under reverse bias condition how it is going to operate we have seen. That is theoretical analysis. Today we are going to see the VI characteristics of a diode under mathematical equations. By using mathematical equations, how we are going to get that characteristics. There is a one derivation is there. From that derivation, actually the derivation is not required for us. It's a lengthy derivation. We require final result. That is, this is called diode current equation. I equals to I naught into E power V by eta Vt minus 1 i equals to i naught into e power v by eta vt minus 1. This is called diode current equation. Or it is also called with some other name that is the relationship between voltage and current of a diode. The relationship between voltage and current of a diode. Now what are these things here? This is called diode current. This is called diode voltage. This is diode current. This is diode voltage. Coming to this is important one, this is called reverse saturation current, reverse saturation current. That means that is the, this is the current that is flowing in the diode when the diode is reverse biased. Yesterday we have seen in the reverse bias condition a small current flows. That current is called reverse saturation current that is denoted by S I naught. Yesterday also in the figure I indicated I naught. Okay, that is this one. Now comes what is V T? V suffix T. V suffix T is called volt equivalent temperature. Volt equivalent temperature. Volt equivalent temperature. And it is equals to K bar T by Q. K bar T by Q, where K bar is Boltzmann constant, T is temperature, Q is charge of an electron, K bar is Boltzmann constant, T is temperature, Q is charge of an electron. This is a constant, we, it's, it is having some numerical value. Charge of electron, already we know it's some numerical 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. If you substitute this, you are going to get it as T by 11,600. That means this volt thermal equivalent or volt equivalent temperature depends on temper temperature. As T increases, this value increases. At room temperature, at room temperature, its value is that is its value is 26 millivolts. At room temperature means 27 degree centigrade. That is at 300 degree Kelvin. At 300 degree Kelvin or at 27 degree centigrade, Vt value is 26 millivolts. This is very important for doing the problems. Vt value is 26 millivolts. Sometimes for simplification purposes, we will take it as 25 millivolts also. Then whenever you want simplification one. Now comes other one, eta is a constant, eta is a constant and its value is 1 for a germanium and 2 for silicon. Eta value equals 1 for germanium, 2 for silicon. Sometimes in the problem you will mention neglect eta value, then no need of considering eta. Otherwise, you have to take, if it is a germanium diode, you have to consider eta equals to 1, whereas for silicon diode, eta has to be 2. Okay, this is about the terminology of each variable that is involved in this one. Now, with this equation, I will explain how a VI characteristics are obtained mathematically. Yesterday we have seen theoretically, today we are going to see mathematically. Now once again I am repeating, this is the current that is flowing in the diode, this is the applied voltage, this one is the reverse saturation current, okay, this eta is a constant, its value is 1 for germanium, 
2 for silicon Vt volt equal to temperature okay it is value is 26 millivolts at room temperature now comes So under forward bias condition, under reverse bias condition, how we are going to analyze this one, see. Under reverse bias condition, V is negative quantity. Under reverse bias condition, V is a negative quantity. Therefore, I equals to I naught into E power V divided by neglect eta. Vt is 26 millivolts minus 1 and this is minus voltage therefore i naught into e power milli that is 10 power minus 3 if it is going 1000 volts divided by approximately okay minus 1 approximately 25 into 40 that is i naught into e power minus 40 approximately e power minus 40 into e power minus 40 is a very small quantity check it in the calculator calculator calci e power minus 40 is very 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 small 0 0.0000 some value very small value therefore this can be neglected this can be neglected therefore you are going to get i equals to minus i naught that's why yesterday i have given it's forward voltage, forward current, reverse current, reverse voltage, if you are taking like this, under reverse bias condition, current is nearly remains constant, this is indicated by, see here, I naught, I equals minus I naught, independent of voltage, see, voltage increasing, but current remains constant, this current remains constant, as the voltage increases. That means the reverse saturation current is independent of voltage. That's clear. And forward, this is forward current and this reverse current both are in the opposite direction. That's why this minus sign appeared. Now comes in the forward bias condition. In the forward bias condition, same let us suppose now the voltage is positive. Under forward bias condition, under forward bias condition, voltage is positive. Same thing we will consider e power 40. Now, e power plus 40 is very large. Check it with calculator. e power 40 is very large value. In that case, this can be neglected. This can be neglected. Therefore, I is proportional to e power voltage approximately. I is proportional to E power voltage. That means output current is proportional to exponential of the input voltage. That's why current in the forward bias condition increases exponentially. Like this. Increases exponentially. But lower portion, it is not increasing exponentially. From here on notes, it increases exponentially. But lower portion, it is not increasing exponentially. But because for very small voltages, this value is very small, then you cannot neglect one. For smaller values, one cannot be neglected. For larger values of V, one can be neglected than exponentially increasing. But initially, it is not exponentially increasing because of the involvement of 1. Once this one, after a certain point of voltage, you can neglect this one, then it increases exponentially. This is the way mathematically we can say that the VA characteristics are like this. The next one is Temperature dependence of VI characteristics. Temperature dependence of VI characteristics. Temperature dependence of VI characteristics. If 
टेम्परेचर इज इंक्रीज और इफ टेम्परेचर वाट एपन्स टू करे दट वी आर गोइंग टू सी डी वी बै डी टी ईक्वल टू मैनस टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलीवर् पर् डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड वाट इज द मीनिंग आफ दिस थिंग एस टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस ओके इफ यू वाट टू डिफरेंशिएट टाइम अंड टेमपरेचर इन स्टाफ यूजिंग स्माल टी यूज कैपिटल टी दट इंडिकेट टेमपरेचर डीवी बै डी टी ईक्वल टू मैनस टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलीवर् पर् डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड Five milli volts for one degree centigrade. Is it clear? That means as temperature increases, this V gamma is nothing but a voltage V gamma decreases. How much it is decreasing? Minus two point five milli volts per degree centigrade. It's an average. That's okay. Now we know that as temperature increases. Voltage decreases. So what happens to current? See, V A characteristics. Voltage is decreasing. Therefore, current also decreasing. Voltage decreasing. Current decreasing. Therefore, as temperature increases, voltage decreases. Then current decreases. So under forward bias condition. As temperature increases, voltage decreases. Automatically, from the V A characteristics, voltage decreases means current decreases. That's about the forward bias characteristic. Coming to the reverse bias, in under reverse bias condition, as temperature increases, reverse saturation current increases. I not increases. As temperature increases, reverse saturation current. That's nothing but I not increases. And it. Doubles for for every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature. For every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature, I not becomes double. That is reverse saturation current increases. Already in the yesterday session, I told reverse saturation current is unwanted current. It must be as low as possible. But as temperature increases, its value is going to increase. That's once again disadvantage. Next one is okay for 10 degree centigrade reverse saturation current doubles, but if you increase the temperature by 1 degree centigrade, how much change in the reverse saturation current? It is 7 percent. For 10 degree centigrade, it becomes two times. For 1 degree centigrade, its value is increases by 7 percent of the original value. Is it clear? Okay, so. As temperature increases, voltage decreases. As temperature increases, reverse saturation current increases. About the V A characteristics, temperature dependence. Next one is static resistance or diode resistance. As yesterday, I think I gave the heading and I am not able to complete it. Diode resistances. Diode exhibits two types of resistances. One is called static resistance, second one is called dynamic resistance, dynamic resistance, static resistance and dynamic resistance. The formula for static resistance R equals to V by I. Static resistance R equals to V by I. At a given point, if I want to calculate static resistance, take this one. This is V1. This is V2. Okay, sorry. I1. Take it as I one, V one. Then, at this point, at this point, static resistance equals to V one by I one. Clear? If you want at some other point static resistance, take that point here, extend here, 
extend here, then you will get the static resistance at that point. If you want static resistance at this point, take this corresponding voltage, corresponding current, that's V by I will give you static resistance at that point. Dynamic resistance is given by R equals to delta V by delta I or dou V by dou I. Delta V by delta A or dou V by dou I. It can be written as V2 minus V1 by I2 minus I1. That means for calculating the dynamic resistance, two points have to be taken. So this is as you one point. I'll take another point. This is V2. This is I2. Then this difference by this difference will give you dynamic resistance. Dynamic resistance is denoted by small r. Static resistance is denoted by capital R. Now which is better? Static resistance is better or dynamic resistance is better? And which is most commonly used one? And if you see here from here, from point to point, at this point static resistance, at this point static resistance, at this point static resistance, at this point if you are calculating static resistance, there is very large quantity. That means they are not so near to each other. At different points it is going to give different static resistances. That is the main disadvantage. At this point, assume it is X ohms. At some other place it is Y ohms and X and Y are little bit far away. That is why static resistance is not used in practical applications. Advantage of dynamic resistance, it is taken between two points. Now I have taken the, between these two points, take any other two points or take any other two points, they are nearer to each other. Dynamic resistance is nearer to whatever the values you are going to calculate it, it is nearer to each other. That is why practical applications, dynamic resistance is most commonly employed and it is denoted by like this. Clear? Which one is better? Dynamic resistance because if you take any two points and other two points, they are nearer to each other. But static resistance from point to point, it varies by large quantity. This static resistance is also called as DC resistance. Static resistance is also called as DC resistance. This dynamic resistance is also called as AC resistance or incremental resistance. AC resistance or incremental resistance. And we are having a derivation for R. You will get it as eta Vt by I. This is one of the formula which is required for problems. Dynamic resistance value, you will get it as R equals to eta Vt by I. How you got this eta Vt by I means? I will, it is a small one only, that is why we will try to do it. I equals to I naught into E power V by eta Vt minus 1. This can be written as I naught into E power V by eta Vt minus I naught which is equals to I. What you require? Dou V by dou I. Okay. So, differentiate above equation. Differentiate above equation with respect to V. Then you are going to get it dI by dV equals to I naught into E power V by eta Vt as it is into 1 by eta Vt minus 0. So this you are going to get it I naught into E power V by eta Vt by eta Vt. This is dI by dV. From this equation, from this equation, what about this thing can be written as uh, we want I naught into E power V by eta Vt, bring this one here, I plus I naught by eta Vt. But what do you require? D by 
di that is eta v t by i plus i naught. I naught is reverse saturation current. It is very small value compared to I. Therefore, this can be neglected. Reverse saturation current can be neglected. Therefore, it's approximately equals to eta v t by I. Eta v t by I. Clear? So, like this, we can calculate the dynamic resistance by using this formula. This is one of the important formula, dynamic resistance. Next one is diode capacitance. Diode exhibits two types of capacitances. First one is called diffusion capacitance. It is denoted by C suffix D. Second one is called transition capacitance. It is denoted as C suffix T. Okay. Diffusion capacitance, transition capacitance. This formula is given by tau into G, where tau is carrier lifetime carrier lifetime this g is conductance opposite to resistance 1 by r g is conductance already in the previously we derived the expression for r g is nothing but 1 by r that is conductance tau carrier lifetime what is the meaning of carrier lifetime Electron hole pair is generated at this instant of time. Is it going to live for lifelong? No. After certain time, the recombination taken place and there is no electron hole pair is existed. How much time the free electron or a hole is available as a life before recombination? It generated at this instant of time. It's taken recombination at this instant of time. The time for which the, the electron or the hole is alive, that means existed, that is called carrier lifetime. For an electron, it is denoted by tau n, for a hole, it is denoted by tau p. Okay. The next one is transition capacitance, it is epsilon a by w, where epsilon is permittivity, a is area, W is width of the depletion layer. W is the width of the depletion layer, A is the area of the depletion layer, epsilon is the permittivity. Epsilon equals to epsilon naught into epsilon r. Epsilon naught is permittivity of free space, epsilon r is permittivity of dielectric material. Epsilon naught is permittivity of free space, Epsilon R is permittivity of dielectric. This diffusion capacitance is also called as storage capacitance. This transition capacitance is also called as space charge capacitance. Space charge capacitance. Now, under forward bias condition, diffusion capacitance is greater than transition capacitance. This value is negligible under forward bias condition because this value, this value is larger value. Under reverse bias condition, CT is larger than CD. Therefore, this is considered, this is neglected under reverse bias condition. Under forward bias condition, this is neglected. The other important one is the di diode in the reverse bias condition acts as a parallel plate capacitor. Why it acts as a parallel plate capacitor? See this formula. It looks like a C equals to epsilon A by D. It's nothing but a parallel plate capacitor formula. That is clear. Under reverse bias condition, the diode behaves as a parallel plate capacitor. Okay. These are the basics related to the diode. Characteristics 
our syllabus states that characteristics of a diode. Okay, we have seen the VA characteristics mathematically, we have seen the theoretically, then static resistance, dynamic resistance, that is diode resistance, then we have seen the diode capacitances. Actually, this thing is required in some of the problems, okay, that's why I explained right now. Some problems we are going to use this formula, some of the problems we are going to use this formula, that's why I carried out here. Okay, now we are going for diode applications. Diode applications. The first application is rectifier. Rectifiers. The second application is clippers. Third application is clampers. Okay. These clippers and clampers together comes under the category of non-linear wave shaping, non-linear wave shaping. If you see in syllabus, there is a clippers and clampers are specified and linear wave shaping is specified. So right now we are going to see the clippers and clampers at the end of the analog circuits, we are going to see linear wave shaping. At that time I will explain what is the difference between linear wave shaping and non-linear wave shaping. Is it clear? Now comes, we will start with the first one, rectifiers. We are going to start with the first application of a diode that is rectifier. What is meant by rectifier? What is meant by rectifier? Rectifier is an electronic circuit which offers low resistance in one direction and high resistance in the opposite direction. That means it will allow the signal in one direction and it blocks the signal in the other direction. That is called rectifier. Once again I am repeating, rectifier is an electronic circuit which offers low resistance to the signal in the one direction and high resistance to the signal in the opposite direction. Is it clear? Now the diode exhibits the same property or not? In the forward bias condition, diode offers negligible resistance. In the reverse bias, it offers very high resistance. Yes sir? Therefore, diode is, can be used in rectifiers because it satisfies the property of the rectifier. Therefore, diode is used in the rectifiers. Okay? Now, what is the use of rectifier? Rectifiers are used to convert AC to DC. Rectifiers are used to convert AC to DC. Now, first question, why to convert AC to DC? Why you have to convert AC to DC? AC is available in our household. Wherever you see sockets will be available. Directly you are going to get AC. Then what is the need for converting it into DC? Directly you can use AC, no? The important thing is, in area, why you have to convert AC to DC? All the electronic devices, electronic devices will operate on DC only. Example, your cell phone, your computer, your laptop, all these things will operate on DC. Electrical devices will work on AC. Electronic devices will work on DC. AC is available in our household. We will take that one, we will convert it into DC and we will get use it. We will use the DC to operate the electronic devices. Now the question is, why can't direct AC, DC is generated? Why you have to convert AC to DC? Can directly DC sources are not available? Can DC sources are not available directly? Yes, it, they are available. Example, batteries. 
in your torch light you are using this much size battery on your wall clock you are going to use this much this much size battery those are called dry cells okay they are and inverter in your household application inverter that's also nothing but a dc producer dc source okay now the thing is there are dry cells are there batteries are available they are directly the produces the dc then why you have to convert ac to dc the main disadvantage with these dry cells or batteries is after 6 months or after 1 year or after 3 months or after 4 months the charge in the battery is discharged so we have to replace it with the new battery it's a costly equipment uh, continuously uh, frequently it has to be replacement it has to be taken place so cost cost wise it's not so effective second wise second one the size for 1 volt battery let us suppose this this is the size for 2 volts battery this is the size for 3 volts battery this is the dc battery this is the size so as the required the voltage goes on increasing the size of the battery is going on increasing so it's also another disadvantage our nowadays everything is miniaturization as thin as possible mobile as thin as possible we are going for a miniaturization but the battery occupies a larger area as the voltage dc voltage goes on increasing that's another one automatically area is increasing size is increasing means cost is going to be increased that's second thing third one is the dc trans the dc signal if you are transferring losses are more ac signal transfer is easy compared to dc dc there are more losses will be there so because of all these reasons because of all these reasons it's always better to convert ac to dc i already said your mobile phone will work on dc okay then you are putting the plug uh, the charger you are pull it, putting in your household application the socket it's giving ac that means is it going to work on ac no the charger adapter converts ac to dc and dc will be given to your cell phone your mobile phone or cell phone will work on dc only it's not ac the adapter or charger internally is having this much size that converts the given ac to dc and it will be given to the your mobile phone okay that's why it's easy to convert ac to dc with the help of rectifiers that's why we are studying the rectifiers is it clear why you have to go for rectifiers it converts ac to dc okay in ac is our available in our household applications it's easy to convert ac to dc using rectifier circuits what are the rectifier circuits available to us rectifier circuits half wave rectifier half wave rectifier it is denoted as or abbreviated as hwr half wave rectifier second one is full wave rectifier full wave rectifier once again full wave rectifier are classified into two categories center tap full wave rectifier center tapped full wave rectifier bridge full wave rectifier center out full wave rectifier bridge full wave rectifier so we are going to see each one so first start with the half wave rectifier start with the half wave rectifier the circuit diagram of half wave rectifier is
not see here. Input is, this is called half a rectifier circuit. Input is 230 volts, 50 hertz, AC signal. It's a sinusoidal input. It is given to a, this block is transformer. So what is the use of transformer? What it will do? It will convert AC to AC only. Once again, it converts AC to AC. Then why you have to convert AC to AC? Now let us suppose you require a 10 volts DC. Then directly 230 volts AC if you are converting, it is not possible. So first of all, this 230 volts has to be down converted to some 12 volts or 13 volts like that. AC. From that one it will produce the whatever the required output. So in this case you require transformer secondary voltage must be lower than the transform primary voltage then it is called step down transformer step down transformer <coughs> that is in step down transformer transformer secondary AC voltage is less than transformer primary voltage some applications you require 400 volts DC Input is 230 volts. How you are going to get 430 volts DC? In that case, step up transformer has to be used. Step up. It is down. Then step up transformer has to be used. Now, what is this step up transformer is going to? It will give the transformer secondary voltage more than transformer primary voltage, AC voltage. Transformer secondary AC voltage is more than transformer primary AC voltage, then it is called step up transformer. For us, we require lower DC voltage, therefore you are using step down transformer. B by seeing the figure, can you able to identify whether it is a step up transformer or step down transformer? Yes, you can able to identify from the circuit whether it is a step up transformer or step down transformer. How you are going to identify? See here, number of windings in the primary are more, number of windings in the transformer secondary are less. Is it clear? That means output secondary voltage, transformer secondary voltage is less than transformer primary voltage, it is step down transformer. If it is like this, It is step up transformer, here more number of windings. So more transformer secondary voltage compared to transformer primary AC voltage, then it is step up transformer. In our application we are using step down transformer. So diode is used for the rectification purposes. This is acting as a load resistor. Output DC voltage is taken available, taken across the RL. Now comes operation, how the circuit operates, what is the output waveform, what is the input waveform. Input waveform is AC, that is sinusoidal and here also between these two points also it is AC. The difference between this one and this one is amplitude wise. Here 230 volts AC, here lesser than the 230 volts. So input is, if you are taking here, like this zero pi two pi three pi four pi four pi zero pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Now comes, your input is consider pass to half cycle. Your input is pass to half cycle. Then the property is that here you will get the pass to half cycle. Here it is negative half cycle. That means here, here we are going to get pass to half cycle like this. That means anode is at higher potential, okay. If this is grounding, then take it as 0 volts. So, cathode is at 0 volts, 
anode is at higher potential. So anode is at higher potential than the cathode. Therefore, di diode D is forward bias. So during positive cycle, the anode is at higher potential than the cathode. Therefore, the diode is forward bias. Forward in the yesterday session, I explained if the diode is forward bias and if it is an ideal diode, then it is replaced by forward bias diode ideal. It is replaced by short circuit like this. Then current I flow to this one. Then V naught equals to I into RL. I initially increases, then decreases. Therefore, output voltage also resistance is a constant. This is a constant. This is initially increasing, then decreasing. Therefore, output voltage also increases, then decreases. Therefore, output voltage is same as the input voltage. Output voltage is same as the input voltage. This is during the past to half cycle. Next comes, okay, clear? During positive half cycle, the anode is at higher potential than the cathode. Therefore, the diode is forward bias. Forward bias means ideal case it is replaced by a short circuit. Then current flows in the loop like this. Then output voltage is available across RL and output voltage. So, this positive half cycle will get it. Next, this positive half cycle also you are going to get it. During this portion, diode D is on. During this portion, diode D is on. Okay. Now comes next one. During negative half cycle, what is going to happen? This is original circuit. During negative half cycle, what is going to happen? Here we will have negative half cycle. That means anode is at lower potential, cathode is grounded, therefore it will be maintained at zero. So anode is at zero, my negative potential, cathode is at higher uh, zero. So here anode is at lower potential than the cathode, therefore the diode is reverse biased. The diode is reverse biased. Reverse bias diode, ideal case, it is replaced by open circuit like this. Any closed loop is formed? No. Now what is going to happen? Current is zero. I no closed loop, therefore current is zero. Current is zero means what is output voltage? Not existed. Therefore, you are going to get straight line like this. Clear? This is the working principle of the half a rectifier. Here the diode is off. Diode is off. Clear now? Why it is called half wave rectifier? Only positive half cycle are rectified, that's why it is called, only one half cycle is rectified out of full cycle, therefore it is called half a rectifier. Clear? Only one half cycle is rectified, therefore it is called half a rectifier. Now the next question is, is the output DC waveform? DC means it has to be a straight line like this. That is DC output waveform. Rectifier are, rectifiers are used to convert AC to DC. Are you getting DC like this? No. This waveform, this waveform is called pulsating DC. Pulsating DC. That means it contains AC component as well as DC components. Clear? The output of a half a rectifier is not pure DC, it's not a straight line. It contains a small portion of DC as well as small portion of AC, that's why it is called pulsating DC. But rectifier has to produce DC waveform or not. That means we have to remove the unwanted AC component. How to remove the unwanted AC component, we are going to see later session. Okay, but right now, 
the output of this one is AC plus DC. Clear? That's why it is called pulsating DC. How to remove that we are comes under category of filters. Now, whether this rectifier is a good one or not, how to judge? It's a better rectifier circuit or not? For that purpose, there are some parameters are there. Based on these parameter values, we are going to decide whether it's a better one or not. Whether it's a better one or not. Clear? Now, what are the fact, uh, these rectifier parameters? Those things we'll see after a break. Okay? electron. Now see Before going to the rectified parameters, we will take the questions. Okay. Shivaram Krishna. Sir, in entire semiconductor donor atoms donate one electron becomes free electron. Is it any possibility that free electron comes into hole created by thermal energy? Not the same electron. Now see here. Outer shell there are four valence electrons are there. If we give some energy, this electron will excite and becomes free electron and this is this replaced by hole. Now don't assume that once again this electron only has to come back to here. There are so many electrons, free electrons are there. Somewhere there is a free electron is here. It's randomly moving. Free electrons randomly moving. It's randomly moving. So here see, negative charge, positive charge will attract. So once they are attract, that's nothing but a recombination. After once their recombination takes place, they will, this electron will disappear, hole will disappear, comes back to valence electrons once again. So at any point of time, if you see, the number of free electrons holes generated is equals to number of electron hole recombination taken place. That's why always it's going to be maintained same value. Okay. If you exit after certain time, months, that's called how much time this electron is gener available before recombination taken place is called carrier lifetime. I think that question is from carrier lifetime is go. Next question, Sekti Prasad, how temperature increases then I naught increases? Yes. As temperature increases, more number of covalent bonds, yesterday I given covalent bonds, the covalent bonds are broken as temperature increases. So electron hole pairs are generated or not. So what happens to the electrons? Increases. What happens to holes? Increases. Therefore, current also increases. Is clear? How temperature increases, then I naught increases means as temperature increases, more number of covalent bonds are broken. That's called thermal energy. As the more number of covalent bonds are broken, free electron hole pair is generated. That means electron strength increases, holes concentration increases. Therefore, current is going to increase. Next question. Silabala Soren. Sir, V is negative under reverse bias condition. Oh, correct. How does the current remains constant? That's only mathematical I proved. Mathematically I proved e power minus quantity, e power negative quantity is a smaller value. 0 0.00001 minus 1. 
So this 0 0.0001 can be neglected or not. So leftover is I equals to I naught into minus 1. That's mathematically I have shown. Theoretically yesterday I explained how it is going to remain a constant. It's clear? Next. Saikat Kole. How does come the value of dV by dt is minus 2.5 millivolts per degree? Any calculation? Sorry, it's, there is no calculation. Okay. It's changes how much it is changes means the by that okay exactly speaking it is minus 2.1 millivolts for the, minus 2.1 millivolts per degree centigrade for silicon minus 2.3 millivolts per degree centigrade for germanium and the average is taken it as minus 2.5 that's all there is no calculation for that one same next question silabella sorian what is the advantage if we count the resistance nearer to what is the advantage if we count the resistances nearer to each other? How can dynamic resistance be useful? See, listen here. I'll take it here. No, I think it's not visible. I'll go here only. See here, I've taken here calculated static resistance. Let us suppose I got it as 100 ohms. If I take in here, if I calculated, you will get it as 50 ohms. See here slope. Okay. If you take it here, you may get 20 ohms. So where the points you are taken based on that one, that value is goes on changing. That's static resistance. Large variations are there on the, there or not. Comes to dynamic resistance. I taken this point and this point calculate static resistance. Let us suppose you got it as 50 ohms. Take this point and this point. You may get it as around 40 ohms something. Take this point and this point. You may get it as some 35 ohms around. See your variations are very small. Your variations is large. If a large variations are there, that's why we are not going to use. Clear? Next. Shiva Ramakrishna. Sir, in semiconductor, temperature increases, more number of electron hole pairs are generated. Yes, that's I already explained. As temperature increases, thermal energy increases, more number of covalent bonds are br uh, broken, therefore electron hole pair is generated, so concentration increases. Next question. Deepika Padukone. Do numericals from, from characteristics of diode comes in gate exam? No. Numericals will not come. Sometimes units will be asked. Okay. What are the units for volt equivalent temperature? It's nothing but volts. Okay. Like that units are given. If you see previous question papers, numericals will never be asked for examination point of view. Only units may be sometimes are, are, will be asked. Clear Dipka? Next. Shakti Prasad. Please explain what is the physical meaning of Transition capacitance, diffusion capacitance, what is meaning of non-linear wave shaping? Okay, I will explain transition capacitance, diffusion capacitance, then what is the meaning of non-linear? Actually, this diffusion capacitance, transition capacitance, we are going to use the formula. That's why I not explain the theoretical thing. So anyway, I will explain the theoretical things also. Then we will go for the that next question. Take a PN junction, apply forward bias. Holes will move from here to here. Here to here. So these holes will be, majority holes will be situated nearer to the junction. Similarly, more number of electrons are situated nearer to the junction. As this voltage goes on increasing, more amount of positive charge here, more amount of negative charge here. See in this region, you are, charge, you are storing the positive charge, you are storing the negative charge. Nothing but a 
this area stores the charge that's why it's there is a capacitance it since stores the charge carriers that's why it is called storage capacitance why it is called diffusion capacitance means because of diffusion mechanism they are crossing the junction that's why it is called diffusion capacitance this is under forward bias condition coming to under reverse bias condition originally this is the width of the depletion layer okay here majority charge carriers are holes here negative ions will be there here positive ions will be there now increase reverse bias what happens to width of the depletion layer increases so here negative charge further increases okay like this negative charge further increases here positive charge further increases ions okay like this now this area entire negative charge is there here entire positive charge is there that means the depletion layer now contains positive charge and negative charge nothing but it stores the charge that's why this is called transition capacitance this occurs in the reverse bias condition this capacitance occurs in the forward bias condition next one okay ninth question it's sivaram krishna sir in semi okay about another one what is the meaning of non linear wave shaping that's i will explain i already said linear wave shaping non linear wave shaping at that time i will explain otherwise while explaining rectifiers the sorry clippers clampers i will explain what is meant by linear while explaining clippers and clampers i will show the difference next sir i am krishna sir in semiconductor temperature increases more number of electron hole pairs are generated current increases but he had told you that forward by forward bias current decreases please explain that sir good question let us suppose in this area 100 electrons are there this entire area is sufficient to hold this 100 electrons if one more electron is added then they are not in a position to accommodate area is fixed area is fixed but the number of charge carriers increases as the temperature increases let us suppose 10 more electrons are added now the total number of electrons becomes 110 but current has to increase no but the problem is this area is sufficient for 100 electrons but we are forcing to sit 110 electrons they are not able to adjust it in that one so collision takes place collision takes place means some energy is lost that's why current decreases more collisions increases so, so instead of all flowing in one direction then only current will be result now what is going to happen one is interacting with other one one is interacting with other, so one is going in this direction another one collides so therefore they are moving in a random direction means stuff moving in a one particular direction which is resulting a current that's this is forward bias but whereas reverse bias same area minority carriers 10 holes are there as temperature increases i said electron hole pair is generated same 10 electrons are generated sorry 10 holes are generated because of temperature minority charge carriers are less number majority charge carriers are more number as temperature increases here also electrons increase here holes increases so this 10 10 becomes 20 holes area is large or not this 20 holes it can accommodate or not now the number of electrons are doubled or not number of holes are doubled or not current is going to increase or not whereas here already there are so many number of electrons are available by adding 10 more For hundred itself, the area is sufficient. If you are putting, and they are moving in a different direction, current decreases. That's why under forward bias condition, current decreases. 
whereas inverse bias condition increases. Next, Piyush Bikini. Sir, please explain the translation capacitance. Explain and once again, just now I, one, one last question, previous eighth question. That's one I explained. Just to go through it. Okay. Still, if you are having any doubts, I will explain. If you pause once again, I think right now I explained. Silabal Soren. Why is negative cycle is removed in the case of forward bias diode in half? Why is the negative half cycle? During the negative half cycle of the input signal, the diode is reverse biased. Already given. Uh, diode, anode is at negative potential, cathode is at zero. That means the diode is reverse bias. Reverse bias means, ideal case it is replaced by open circuit. Open circuit means no current flows in the circuit. If no current flows in the circuit, there is no V0. That's why that portion is take, removed. Clear? Next, Ujjwal. Why are electronic circuits are grounded? Always a reference. I said, I am tall. How you are going to say I am tall? There is a, some reference is there. For that purpose, reference voltage level is ground always taken. So, you have 10 volts, you are said voltage is 10 volts means with respect to ground, 10 volts. Clear? 5 volts, that means with respect to ground voltage, it's 5 volts. That's reference level. Okay, 0 volts. Next, Sheshwant Supra. Where half a rectifier are used? Rectifiers are used in converting AC to DC. Generally, we are using full wave rectifier. But if you want to study full wave rectifier, first of all, half wave rectifiers has to be studied. Then it clears the full wave rectifier. That's why we are studying practically half wave rectifier is invented first, but it is having its own limitation. That's why we are not going to use it practically. But we have to study because for full wave rectifier, that is basic. Okay. Yeah, very half a rectifier clear. I mean like in mobile chargers or any other type of chargers, how we come to know whether which rectifier is used. Half a rectifier is never used, only full way rectifier is used. Which full way rectifier is used in mobile chargers? While explaining, I will explain which one you are going to use. Clear? I will explain that question later while explaining full way rectifier. Next question, Kishore. Is there any reason for naming diffusion capacitance as storage capacitance? I think I explained. So as I explained is clear, then it's moving from P to N because of diffusion mechanism. What is meant by diffusion? Still I explained. Movement of charge carry from high concentration area to low concentration area. Because of diffusion, they are moving from one from P to N. That's why it is called diffusion capacitance. Then comes reverse bias is called transition or space charge capacitance. Transition, see, one side there is a depletion layer, one side p-type semiconductor, other side n-type semiconductor, this is in between. So, you have transition from p to n, there is in between we are having. One side p-type, another side n-type, we have transition, therefore it is called transition capacitance. Space charge means in this space, two charges are there, positive charge, negative charge, space charge, in this space, that is why it is called space charge capacitance. Next, Shakti Prasad. If I reverse the position of the diode in case of half a rectifier, what will happen? Good question. If you reverse it, you will not get positive half cycle. You, you will get it. Like this. You will get it like this. That is only the difference. Clear Shakti Prasa? You are going to get another half cycle. Next question is others K. As temperature increases, more number of covalent bonds are broken, resulting more electrons and holes and thus increase conducted good. Then how will current decreases with the temperature? Is it like we should consider static resistance for DC signals, dynamic resistance for AC signals? Okay. First question, I already explained as temperature increase, whatever, till that point is good, but what at the end of the time, how will the current decreases with the temperature? Already I said, in certain room, example, take certain room. In that room, 10 members can be easily accommodated. Yes, 10 members are accommodated easily. But let us suppose two more added. Are you going to uh, protest or not? Because there is no space available. You are going to protest that don't allow those two members. Okay? That means, let us suppose still they came. We have to adjust or not. Then there is some repulsion force comes between you and neighboring or not. That means, 
conductivity decreases. Whereas, let us suppose same room, 10 members can be accommodated, but only 2 members are there. 2 more have added. It can easily adjust to math. 4 number, more, more number of people. So, example, more number of electrons, more currents. But already overcrowded in the, in the room, if you are putting more means the problem comes. Less, over, less members, you can put it. That's only the difference. Clear? Still? Still, if you are not able to understand, you can pose it once again. I will clarify. Then, is it like we should consider static resistance for DC signals and dynamic resistance for AC signals? Okay. Generally, we will do it like that only. Okay. Static resistance for DC signals and dynamic resistance for AC signals. It is not so much like that. Okay. Generally, we will prefer the dynamic resistance. Always. Static resistance as a thing we are studying. That is all. Nothing like that. There is no specification, we should use static resistance for DC, it is not like that. Okay, see, R equals to eta Vt by I, that I is total current. It is not DC current, it is not AC current, it's a total current, therefore it, it can be used. Clear? I think it is clear. Okay, now still if you are having any questions, you can pose me one thing, I will try to clarify that one. So we are going to start with the rectifier parameters.